Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're all having an amazing day. In today's video, I'm gonna show you several recent macro shots that I took at a local nature reserve. I'm especially excited to share one particular species that I had not encountered before. It's a triangular spider, and I managed to get a couple of really nice detailed shots of its beautiful, colorful body. All of the images that I'll be showing you were shot on the Canon ATD with the Canon 100 millimeter macro lens and the Raynox DCR 250 snap-on lens. I really like this setup because it gives me ultimate flexibility. It allows me to take both stills and videos very easily. Before I start showing you guys the images and talk about the species that I captured, if you're new to my channel and if you are into nature photography, macro photography and bird photography, or even aerial photography, feel free to check out my dedicated playlists. There might be some videos that are of interest to you. Anyway, let's start talking about the shots now. This first series of shots are gonna be that of a drone fly. Native drone flies are brightly colored hoverflies with large, strange spotted eyes. The body is black and orange striped. They have a hovering flight and make a droning noise like a bee, hence their common name. Their size is approximately one centimeter. They're usually seen around flowers and they feed mainly on nectar. The larvae of many hoverfly species prey on aphids and other small soft-bodied insects, but we don't know much about the breeding habits of the native drone fly. I really like the three-dimensional depth in this last image. I was really pleased with it. One would normally think that because in macro photography, you get really close to your subjects, composition is not a big issue, but clutter can still be really distracting, especially if you are shooting through vegetation, then can be a lot of distracting elements. So try to make sure that you eliminate as many as possible. Another tip that I can give you when you're shooting macros, if it's possible, then try to hold the vegetation, for example, a little leaf that the insect is sitting on, because it's gonna be much easier to hold that still and then move in and out with the camera in your hand, you'll be using manual focus with macro photography 99% of the time anyway. I'm gonna just briefly show you a couple more images of different fly species that I captured. This first low-key portrait is that of a sepromyza or sepromyza. I really like the orange colored body and those compound eyes with the green hues around the center look really cool as well. In this next image, you can see another fly species, a Daxini. The colors of this particular species are relatively dull and muted. I took several images and tried to stack them and unfortunately kept moving. Even if the specimen moves just a few millimeters here and there, then you won't be able to create a decent enough stack for maximum depth of field. The next couple of images are that of a leaf mining insect. I haven't been able to find much information on this particular species. I tried to create a deeper stack when I was using the DCI 250 at a higher magnification ratio, but unfortunately those stacks didn't work out. Either it kept moving on this blade of grass, plus the weather conditions weren't optimal either. It was really windy that day. If I zoom in, you can see all those interesting, uh, really cool textures on its body, those little uh, hollow structures and those spike-like um, structures that surround the entire specimen, they kind of build like a tank. In this next image, you can see a rubber fly. It was just resting on this leaf. And I really like the earthy tones of this backlit scene. In this next image, you can see a very small spider species. It looks quite big, but trust me, it was relatively small. The species is a badge huntsman spider, and it was essentially completely covered by its web. They create these tent-like structures that they use during the day to reside in, to chill in, as they are many nocturnal hunters. I really like this next uh, species. This is a very small moth species that I captured last year as well. It is a relatively common species on the east coast of Australia, the Nemophora sparsella. It is very colorful, beautifully iridescent. If I zoom in, you can see those scales are absolutely gorgeous. Hopefully one day I'll be able to capture a really high resolution, high magnification shot of those scale structures. The second last species is a parasitic or parasitoid wasp, the Xanthopimpla. These species parasitize many spiders and also holometabolous insects. Holometabolism refers to the complete metamorphosis, is a form of insect development that has four distinct life stages, the egg, the larva, the pupa, and the imago or imago, which refers to the adult life stage. They inject their egg into the host's body or onto its surface. Beetles, butterflies, moths, wasps, bees and ants are usually the hosts for parasitic wasps. Some of them completely paralyze their host, 
which stop moving and some let them grow and develop. It's absolutely fascinating. So here we are at the last species, which is the triangular spider. As the common name suggests, they have a very distinctive triangular or heart shaped abdomen that is often brightly colored and patterned in a combination of red, yellow, orange, black or white. The first two pairs of legs are enlarged, covered in spines and curved forward to catch prey. The last two pairs of legs are a lot shorter. Males and females are very similar in color, shape and size. They are found in a range of habitats throughout Australia, in particular on the east coast. They are commonly found in eucalyptus forests and woodlands, but they can also be found in gardens, for example. They are often seen on trees and shrubs. The one that I found was on the underside of a eucalyptus leaf as well. In these first few shots, you can see that it was hanging on to its prey. It was probably sucking out the innards of a partially digested fly that was already wrapped in silk. Triangular spiders are ambush predators. They wait motionlessly on leaves with their front two pairs of legs widely separated. When their prey passes by, they capture it. They mainly feed on insects and flies. I captured this image the following day. You can see that the prey was all gone. And then a low angle shot just looking straight into its eye. It was getting a little bit aggressive, lifted up its uh, front legs just to ward off any potential predators. I think it's a beautiful species with all those gorgeous orange hues. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this up for today. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you enjoy the content, leave a comment down below. Let me know which species was your favorite. Thank you so much again for watching and see you guys very soon in the next one.